Happy Halloween everybody! Good news, you are getting two analysis videos this week. Partly because it is Halloween, so I want to treat you all to something nice, and also because I've arbitrarily decided I want to finish this series before the end of the year. And having two analyses this week means I can do that. So sit back, grab some candy, and enjoy this week's analysis, Test of Courage. Suggested by Linus Motor, this story is based on the manga's 18th chapter and can be found in episode 6 at 9 minutes and 35 seconds. The story begins with Nishkata looking outside of his bedroom window to see that the rain has stopped, referring to the rain that started in first day of summer vacation. He then quickly wonders why he is so happy about the rain stopping before we cut to the empty lot, which is covered in puddles. Takagi arrives at the empty lot and calls out to Nishkata, who doesn't recognise her at first. Takagi seems surprised to see him there, but Nishkata states that he made a promise, referring to the promise he made in tandem riding. Nishkata can't help but stare at Takagi, likely flustered over the clothes that she is wearing. Takagi begins to look at the puddles in the empty lot, while Nishkata begins to wonder if this could be considered a date, given that this is the first time they have planned to meet each other outside of school. Takagi sees him thinking and gets up close to ask if he is paying attention. Nishkata stumbles back and says that he didn't hear her. She says that they can't practice tandem riding in this condition, but that going home before it was time for her afternoon plans would be a bother, so she asks Nishkata if he would like to hang out anyway. Nishkata panics and thinks to himself that this is a date, but then talks himself out of it and tells Takagi that it is fine to hang out as long as it is somewhere where there aren't a lot of people. Takagi thinks for a moment and then has an idea. We cut to the outside of a tunnel where Nishikata asks if they are really going to do a test of courage despite it being daytime. Takagi says that it's still pretty dark in there even during the day and then tries to set the mood with some stories about the place. She tells him that despite being straight, cars kept on crashing into the walls, which is why the tunnel was decommissioned, and that this was the work of bloodthirsty spirits who prey on cars. She also tells him that there are rumours of people being spirited away. Now I tried to look up haunted tunnels on Shoto Island, but I couldn't find anything. However, it could be possible that this tunnel is based on Kiyotaki Tunnel in Kyoto. It could just be a coincidence, but some of these photos of Kiyotaki Tunnel really look like the tunnel that these guys are going through. Takagi asks Nishikata if he is scared. He denies it and marches into the tunnel before stopping in his tracks to observe how dark it is. He begins to hear strange noises created by the wind. Or is it? Takagi points out a paper talisman, one which is specifically made to ward off evil spirits. The speciality of this talisman is relevant given that they can have all kinds of uses. Some even put them up in their kitchens to help prevent fires. Have a look at my notes or the links in the description if you want to see more. Takagi begins to speculate on what kind of terrible spirit can be lurking in these tunnels that would require a talisman to ward off. Nishkata hears a water drip and freaks out, giving Takagi a reaction to laugh at. She says that Nishkata is scared, but as he tries to explain himself, Takagi points down the tunnel, and we see an old steel barrel. Takagi wonders what it's doing here, and then eggs on Nishkata to check what's inside. He seems reluctant at first, but then Takagi asks if he's too scared to do it. This is enough for Nishkata to go towards the barrels. He approaches the barrel awkwardly, but slowly. Making it to the barrel, he begins to move his head above it slowly looking towards the bottom, unsure of what he will find, and then, suddenly... <laughs> Nishkata pulls himself up after that scare and asks what the big idea is. However, when he turns around, Takagi isn't there. He begins to become nervous, remembering that she had said something about people being spirited away, as he calls out for her again and again. He feels a tap on his shoulder. There's something there with him. He turns around to see the steel drum, and then turns around to see... Takagi. He screams, but Takagi assures him that it's just her and there's no reason to be frightened. She asks if he was looking for her and looks very pleased with herself. Nishikata asks if that's what it looked like, clearly trying to deny the idea. Takagi then points over to a hole in the wall and asks Nishikata to take a look inside. Nishikata realises that she is trying to get him again with the same trick she had used with the steel drum, but decided that he would be the one to scare her this time. He sticks his hand into the hole, which... I don't know about the Japanese or even you Americans who watch this, but in Australia, sticking your hand into a random hole is basically a death wish. He acts as though his hand is stuck and that he is being pulled in. He looks back to ask Takagi for help, but sees her holding a white frisbee in front of her head as she cryptically calls his name. Now, you wouldn't think that this moment would be tangent-worthy, but here I go anyway. The first time I watched this show, back when there were only six episodes out, I watched it dubbed. Now, these days I primarily watch the subbed version of the show, if my rants about subtitles haven't been clear enough about that fact. 
But a major difference between the sub and the dub is how Nishikoto's name is pronounced. I pronounce it the same way the characters in the sub do, with three syllables leaving out the I. <laughs> However, in the dub, they pronounce it with the I, making it four syllables long. Hey, Nishikata. <laughs> This is the only time in the original Japanese version that Nishikata's name is pronounced with the I. Nishikata. Nishikata screams and Takagi laughs. When asked what she has put in front of her face, she replies that she found it part ways back in the tunnel, suggesting that this was always the plan. She tells Nishikata that she is glad his hand came loose and goes to keep walking. Nishikata swears that he will get her back before another water drop sound occurs and makes him jump again. They make it to the end of the tunnel. Nishikata is disappointed that he never got her back before they both hear someone calling out. On a footpath above, a little girl tells her brother that another couple is on a date in the tunnel, and her brother tells her to knock it off and that it's time to leave. Now, these characters are not just one-offs, they've actually shown up before now. You can see the moments just before this encounter from their perspective in chapter 26.5. They also show up in chapter 21 of another manga by the same author called Fudatsuki no Kyoko-chan. I think I'm starting to pick up a pattern with this author's naming conventions. Funny enough, Yukari, Mina, and Sane cameo in this very same chapter. And this black-haired girl, Yukari, would go on to cameo in Takagi-san chapter 85 dog. Takagi reiterates that the little girl had called it a date. Nishikata nervously says that she clearly doesn't know what she's talking about. Takagi leans towards him and gives him a stare while he asks what he said to incur this reaction. Takagi points out that Nishikata is blushing, who more or less ignores it until Takagi says that the test of courage was fun. Nishikata agrees with a nervous but genuine looking smile before suggesting that they go home. Takagi agrees, but as Nishikata goes to walk away from the tunnel, Takagi asks what he is doing and points back into the tunnel, ushering him to follow her through it again. We cut to later that day with Nishikata doing his push-ups and wondering why, despite being on summer break, he still has to do just as many push-ups. Honestly, there isn't a lot to get into in this story, at least not much that we haven't already discussed. However, the little things throughout this story, like the pronunciation of Nishikata's name and the cameo from that little girl and her brother, made this story worth going into. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween, and I will see you on Friday with a regularly scheduled analysis. Until then, remember that you can see the notes and outtakes for this video on my website for free. Links will be in the description. If you want to see the films that I write and direct, you can see them on my parent channel, Big Joe Productions. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.